What's up, everybody? everybody? Welcome to the Jamie D Show. Live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 12 p.m. PST out of Las Vegas, Nevada, where the Super Bowl will be this weekend and also on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM every Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. CST out of the Elgin in the Chicago land area. We're also live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at The Jamie D Show. That's spelled T-H-E-J-A-I-M-E-D-E-E-S-H-O-W. <clears throat> Welcome in, everybody. It's hump day. <laughs> I tried to do that. My app just won't let me. Hump day. There you go. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. For today's show rundown, we're going to go over the daily news, and then we're going to have a conversation about knowing how to say no. Did you hear me? Knowing how to say no. I feel a lot of us have a huge struggle with knowing how to say no, me included. So I'm super excited for the social topic of the day so that we can learn collectively how to say no. Let's get into some daily news. As reported by ABC7 News, Elgin, Illinois, Elgin resident Bill Briska usually lets the water in his faucet run for several minutes before using it. He believes that allows him to use the cleaner water that has not been sitting in the lead pipes for a while. Last year, the city tested the water and found his water to be above the acceptable level for lead. Quote, lead is not good, that's for sure, and it's 2.5 times over the actionable limit. So yes, it is of concern, and quote Briska said. Briska's home is one of many in Elgin, more than 100, 100 years old, and most have lead water pipes as well. Due to this, the city hosted an informational meeting that has already passed, offering water filtration systems to homeowners with homes built before 1986. In the meantime, Elgin has already begun a program to replace the lead pipes from the service lines in homes, which are not owned by the city, but are where the lead can get, but are where the lead can get into a home's water supply. Quote, we don't have lead in our water, end quote, said Elgin Water Director Nora Betram. Quote, lead comes from corrosion of plumbing materials, which is how specific, end quote. Experts say lead in water can be dangerous, especially for young children and pregnant mothers. Quote, if you have kids at home, it's a pretty huge problem, end quote, said Ezra Hurtado with NOAH Systems. The city replaces the older water lines for free, but it's a long process. One neighborhood at a time, they said. Quote, I have tenants affected by this, so I came to get a picture for each of each of each one of them, end quote, said Elgin landlord Phil Martinez. The city of Elgin said it's going to take more than 12 years before they finished with they're finished with the project, replacing all the lead water pipes into homes at a total cost of one hundred and fifty million. Wow. Well, listen, y'all know, <laughs> when if you don't know, I drink almost a gallon of water a day. I'm all about my water intake, and I really, really want to make sure that people in Elgin hear this news so they can understand that there is clean water coming their way because they're working on it. It's just going to take a long time. So please make sure you get your Brita filters, whatever filter you need to make sure that you're filtering out whatever it is in your water pipes. It's crazy, too, because I feel like growing up, <laughs> we used to drink water out of water holes and out of the farm faucet out of the water fountains in schools and i think we're okay <laughs> i mean you know people are developing uncurable diseases at this moment so i don't know maybe it is the water you just never know there's a lot of things that are happening to our bodies as we get older and we can make a joke saying that we turned out fine but in all reality a lot of us are unfortunately Gaining things that we don't want in our life. And it, it, it's just crazy how there's so many things placed on our earth <laughs> that could give us diseases. And it, it's, it's pretty sad. And I, I really hope that Elgin continues to do what they need to do to make sure that people have access to clean and healthy water. Because, I mean, it's essential. All right. A South Carolina man named Timothy Snipe is recovering after taking on a coyote that went after his dog. And it was all caught on camera. He eventually dumped the coyote in the trash, literally, until animal services came and took the coyote with it, later relocating it. On Sullivan's land, where coyote sightings have become increasingly common and where the events in the video took place, there were four attacks on dogs within days of each other in August. The Barrier Islands mayor suggested residents carry air horns to scare away coyotes they encounter. Snipe Solution is a coyote-proof vest for his dog, Roxy. I didn't even know they had those. The Chihuahua normally roams the property off leash. Take a look and listen to how everything went down.
sorry. I'm sorry. I can't help but chuckle. I can't help but chuckle because if you're not watching the YouTube and you're listening in in your cars, one, thank you so much for not turning the radio dial, but you're not seeing the video that we all just watched on the many streaming platforms that I'm on. And this man literally picked up the coyote by its tail and threw him in the dumpster. I don't care if y'all try to sit here and say that's animal cruelty. He did what he needed to do to protect his dog. And I'm sure that coyote was not harmed. But <laughs> if you didn't look at that coyote's face, he was like, now why am I being held by my tail? <laughs> Literally, the coyote was so confused, too stunned to speak. I'm sorry, that video, <laughs> I just can't help but chuckle. It, it was funny. And hey. I love animals. I'm all for making sure you don't hurt yourself, others, animals, and anybody who's defenseless. However, if anybody came after my pets, I'm going to do what I need to do to protect my pet. It's do or die. That coyote was probably hungry, really thought that that chihuahua was a prime steak and went for the kill. So, yes, if I got to get rid of this coyote to save my dog, I'm going to do so. I don't care what none of y'all say. Because, listen, animals are really humans. <laughs> Seriously, dogs are like little humans. They're like little babies, little kids. I love animals. I love dogs. I love cats. I'm unfortunately allergic to a lot of them, but I still love them. And I understand that people truly cherish their pets. It's like they're babies. It's like they're kids. They're like kids that literally never grow up, and they're always dependent on you. But they always give us way more than we can ever give back to our pets. And I love dogs. I love dogs. So I, I pride this man on defending his dog the way he should have without actually hurting this coyote. Because, I mean, I guess it kind of is an animal, too, you know? <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, more daily news. This is the Jimmy D Show live on KSHP out of Las Vegas and live on WR Men out of the Elgin in the Chicagoland area. I'll be right back. Discover the charms of life along the Mother Road, historic Route 66 at the Hampton Inn of Litchfield, Illinois. The Hampton is off of Route 55, just 56 miles northeast of St. Louis. Dine in at Nancy's Pizza next door or the historic Ariston Restaurant on Old 66. Cruise into a drive-in movie. And for fishing, boating, and hiking, Lake Louie is the centerpiece of Litchfield's bustling outdoor culture. For reservations, call 217-324-4441. In the middle of the night, everything will be all right if you listen to Coast to Coast right here on WRMN, seven days a week from midnight to 5 a.m. Each night on Coast to Coast, listeners are captivated by George Nuri with discussions on news and current events, conspiracy theories, UFOs, life after death, and all things curious and unexplained. Coast to Coast, every night, midnight to 5 a.m. right here on WRMN, AM 1410 and 967 FM. Hey there, this is Marky B from the First Shift Morning Show, and on my show, I try to make local movers and shakers feel comfortable when they join me for interviews, like Sherry Blazier of the Elgin History Museum. I think I need to note to you that I just looked at my mood ring, and it is perfectly purple, which means I'm very happy and content and sailing along. I figured if I immersed myself in the accoutrements, I would be in the mood for this. Huh. Accoutrement? Is that what you said? Accoutrement. What she said. Just join me mornings from 6 until 10 a.m. right here on WRMN. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Jamie D Show, Woo! live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 12 p.m. PST out of Las Vegas, Nevada, where the Super Bowl is actually happening this weekend, and live on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM every Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. CST out of the Elgin in the Chicago land area. Welcome back, everybody. If you're just now tuning in, we're still going over some daily news. I want to remind you all we are live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at The Jimmy D Show. That's spelled T-H-E-J-A-I-M-E-D-E-E-S-H-O-W. If you're listening in, in your cars right now, thank you so, so, so much. But if you have to get out of your car soon, go to YouTube, type in The Jimmy D Show, and continue to listen to my live radio show. And also see what I actually look like. <laughs> 
And hey, if you're watching right now on the YouTube, don't forget that you can actually log in using your Gmail account and get in on the action with commenting live. I do acknowledge comments and I will read them live on air if I can see them. So just log in using your Gmail account and join the chat. I appreciate Kara for always being here and being very, very interactive. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's get back into some more daily news. In crazy Las Vegas news, according to 8 News Now, state officials allege a woman was performing dental procedures in Las Vegas without a license. According to documents the 8 News Now investigators obtained, Monica Davis faces a charge of illegal practice of dentistry, a felony for running the business on Sarah, Sahara Avenue near Rainbow Boulevard in the West Valley, documents said. State investigators said Davis ran a company called the Veneer Experts, but the business had no license. The company also lists Chicago as a location on its website. Officials said Davis moved to Las Vegas area from Illinois, though there was no indication she had a license in either state, state officials said. A woman who filed a complaint told state investigators she saw an advertisement for the business on Facebook and scheduled an appointment, documents said. The woman said she arrived at the location provided to her in a text message finding the veneer business in a room at a beauty parlor, document said. The person who performed the procedure, later identified as Davis, shaved the woman's tooth and applied a composite to it, the document said. Quote, the patient stated during the process, red flags are to come up, end quote. Investigators wrote in court documents, quote, the patient did not observe a dental tray or an autoclave, a device used to clean and sterilize dental equipment, end quote. The procedure left the woman with a larger tooth and fused several surrounding teeth, documents said. Quote, the woman asked Davis about being able to floss because the teeth looked fused together. Davis told the woman they did do not fix that, end quote, documents said. The, later, the woman later contacted the veneer experts again. The woman on the phone told the patient she owed $50 and needed to call a number to schedule another appointment, documents said. The per person on the phone also asked the patient to bring cash. Two weeks after the woman's appointment, the veneer broke off. The woman went to a dentist who told her, quote, it was not a real dental grade. It was not, it was not real dental, it was not real dentist grade material, document said. Official with the Nevada Department of Public Safety arrested Davis on January 30th, record said. She posted bond and is due back in court in March. Wow. <laughs> Y'all, I'm, I'm all for Working on yourself. If you feel the need to get a BBL, if you feel the need to get a gastro sleeve, if you feel the need to get your abs etched, get your chin put in, uh, get your get your get your face sculpted, do, do whatever you need to do. Get veneers, do it. But a lot of y'all honestly don't even need a lot of these procedures. I'm gonna be honest. I saw this one girl on Instagram who commented on this story, and she said something about how she wants to get her face reconstructed. And I was like, I don't know this lady, but I want to see what she looks like. And so I went to her page, and I was like. Why would this girl feel the need to get her face reconstructed? Again, I'm all for it. I support it. If, if you want to go and do it, do it. Uh, who am I to tell you? No. But that girl was beautiful. She looked great just the way she was. I'm like, what is it about social media and the media at large that makes people feel like they need to do these things? I get there are some people who truly need to get these things, but a lot of y'all don't need veneers. A lot of y'all need braces. <laughs> Y'all getting rid of the teeth, not the teeth, but the teeth y'all got and getting veneers. Y'all need braces. You don't need to get, you know what? If you want to do it, you go do it. But if you're going to do it, do it right. Please don't try to get no Groupon to get veneers. Don't try to get a Groupon to get a BBL. Please, please go to an actual place that you can vet. Go to a place that has reviews. Check out the licensures, licenses, and more. Check out that doctor or whoever it is that owns that spa and make sure that they have several procedures under their belt. Don't just go anywhere because you see everybody else doing it and you want to be a part of the crowd. I understand social construction of reality makes a lot of y'all feel like you're not good enough and that you're ugly and that you need these procedures, but I promise you, you don't. However, if you're going to go get these things, please do your research. Please. And I promise y'all, you, you stop trying. Y'all don't need to keep up with the Joneses. Please stop trying to keep up with the Joneses. A lot of y'all don't even have the money to go out there and get it. And y'all are taking your very last to do whatever it is y'all possibly can to get these procedures done. And it's it's killing y'all. It really is. It's taken away from y'all. And either y'all could have waited or y'all could have done some more self-work and realized you didn't need it. 
ooh, it, it makes me so sad when I see so many people getting surgeries that didn't need it, didn't do the research, rushed to get it, and went broke just to look like everybody else, just to be a part of everybody else, just to feel like they belong. A lot of y'all are so much better off by being different. You don't need to belong. You don't need to be like everybody else. And God fearfully, fearfully, and wonderfully, and wonderfully made you in his image. I promise y'all, y'all look amazing. Y'all just got to see it for yourselves. I promise you. Stop just look, looking at these social media influencers and think you need to be like them because you don't. You really don't. <laughs> I just really want y'all to know that. Please remember, being different is a good thing. Whew. Per the neighborhood talk, Monique, American stand-up comedian and actress, calls out Taraji P. Henson for not having smoke with Oprah Winfrey over mistreatment while filming The Color Purple. Here's a snippet of what Monique had to say while being interviewed by Shannon Sharp on his weekly podcast, Club Shay Shay. Act like our eyes didn't see what it saw when we watched that promotion happen mm -hmm. with The Color Purple. Right. We wanted to act like we didn't see how Oprah Winfrey treated Taraji. In my humble opinion, when you saw her walk up, you saw that there was tension. You saw that there was something happening. Right. And then when you see Taraji write her a love letter, it's like, listen, we got to stand tall and stand strong on what we know. You, We know you were mistreated. We know it wasn't right. We know it was unfair. And then you turn around and say, oh, but Lady O handled it. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that because that allows Lady O to keep on doing what she's doing. And we're in a position of, I don't want to say nothing because we saw how Monique got whooped. Now, again, that's just my humble right. opinion. But I don't know what else to, I don't know how else to frame that. It's like, listen, you better fix that because you saw what they did to her. You saw how they treated her. Is it a situation, do you believe it's a situation that Oprah might have faced something similar that maybe wasn't as public as you? And, and, and she's looking at it, well, if I faced that, went through it and came out on the other side and look at me, it should be okay. Because sometimes we get that with parents. You know, I struggle. You say my kids should have to struggle sometimes also. Do you think that might be something going on with her? Or you just like, she, there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect. Okay. There's a disconnect and there's been a disconnect for years. There's a disconnect. And I think what happens is we place people on these pedestals mm -hmm. and we say, oh no, you can't do no wrong. We don't even want to hear it. Right. And when you hear cats say, you know what they do? They don't say anything and they act like it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep talking until you take accountability. Right. Until you say, uncle, I've done this. That's why it was so important. From Oprah Winfrey to Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels. Now, Lee Daniels was the only one I had to deal with. Did you see Lee Daniels apologize? Mm -hmm. He walked out on he that stage. stage. Not only did he apologize on stage, that man apologized to our children. That man apologized to our children and said, I need to. Deep breath. Sigh. Y'all, this is going to be a little hard. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey, I got to start off by saying this. I've worked with you, Miss O. <laughs> I've worked with you. And I love you, Miss O. I really do. And I would love to work with you again. But you know, I got to do my job as a radio personality, as a personality in general, and as somebody who has to hold themselves accountable so everyone else doesn't have to. So please, please, please don't cancel me. Oh, don't cancel me, lady. Oh, but I got to say this. I'm with you when you're right. And Monique has been right about a lot of stuff. Monique was written off when she came out and said that she was mistreated that she wasn't getting paid enough by Netflix, that these big powers that be, Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels, Oprah Winfrey, and more, were mistreating her. And I've worked with actually all three of them. I, And I'm going to tell you this. Just because I had a different experience doesn't mean Monique's experience and other people's experiences aren't valid, aren't true, aren't true to who they felt that they saw in those moments. So I will never disregard what those people have been through. And I will never try to put my story above those people's stories because mine isn't that important. I'm not fighting for any rights. They are. But I say this to say that I've worked with Tyler Perry. I've worked with Oprah. I've worked with Lee Daniels. And they have 
all, they, they're doing so many things at once. And a lot of times you don't get to see what other people see. And a lot of times you're not even the same bracket as people like Monique to even see certain things, to hear certain things, to deal with certain things. And so when people like Monique speak, I feel like we need to hear them. I always say that we should stop victim shaming. And I understand, let me, let me say this real, real quick, because I'm all for defending all people, white, black, Hispanic, gay, bi, trans, whatever you may be. I'm all for supporting people because people deserve to be supported, loved, and protected. However, this is a black woman and black women really deserve to be respected because again, we know how racism works. We know how stereotypes work and we know how people like to place things like black women are aggressive on them. And when Monique came out and said, Hey, I'm being stern in my asks. I'm letting you know that this is what I've been through. And this is my story. A lot of people try to write Monique off as aggressive. A lot of people try to write her off as someone who didn't know. A lot of people try to say like, you're trying too, too hard to fight against the machine. You can't do that. And if it's not for people like, Monique, we wouldn't have all these other protections. We wouldn't have the Me Too movement. We wouldn't have laws put in place to protect certain people. If it wasn't for people like Monique who stood up, stood up against his machines, we wouldn't have revealed people like all these other people in the industry who have done wrong. Seriously. And so my thing is this, if it comes out that Oprah is not a good person, if it comes out that Oprah is mistreating people, if it comes out that Oprah is not doing what she's supposed to be doing, uh, uh, it's, it sucks when you, you look at your idols and you're like, I love you. I always want to work with you. And I never experienced that. But when it, when it happens, you got to call a spade a spade and you got to hold those people accountable because let's, let's call a spade a spade. If it happened to you or I, they would do everything, everything in their power to hold us accountable. So those people deserve to be held accountable as well. Look at what happened with Harvey Weinstein. Look what happened to all these other people who were in political powers and who were in entertainment powers, who, who are doing all these things to these innocent people and getting away with it. Because like Monique said, because they're so great at their craft, because they so impacted us so much in our lives, we put them on this pedestal and said that they can never do wrong. I mean, I'm being real honest. I'm now back in Chicago, and the people of Chicago, while I love them, I'm from here, have this extreme weird obsession with R. Kelly even knowing what he has done. And it's people like that who can't remove the artists from their artistry and I'm sorry, who, who tried to, excuse me, who can, who tried to remove the artist from their artistry and say like, no, because they had such an impact, because they were so great at what they did, because they did all this at this one point in time, they can't do wrong. And even if they did do wrong, I'm going to sweep that under the rug and act like it didn't happen. And that's a problem with a lot of our communities. And it sucks. It sucks. And I agree with Monique. She says that if you're going to be about it, be about it. If you're going to speak up, speak up. Don't have, but it. Don't, don't, don't speak up a little bit. And then turn around and be like, oh, you know, everything was great. I love this. This person stood up for me. All this was awesome. I, listen, I don't care if you got to go up against, and I love you. I love you, President Barack Obama. But I don't care if you got to go up against President Barack Obama and say he did something. You better stick up for what you believe in and you better tell your truth. Nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I'm being so serious because this is why we continue to deal with things and history continues to repeat itself because people get too afraid of what could happen to them if they speak out. Don't let a title, don't let a status, don't let somebody who's been put up on a pedestal for so long, again, I don't care if it's the top of the top, like President Barack Obama, stop you from telling your truth and saying, this person did this to me. This person put me through this. And we got to be very honest, too. A lot of our elders unfortunately, especially in the black community, have this dumb mindset, like Shannon Sharp said, because I went through it, you went through it too. I think that's, you should, you should have to go through it too. I think that's the dumbest thing. You went through it, hopefully, so we don't have to go through it. And that's what I do. I do what I do so that people behind me don't have to go through the things that I went through. I do things for my family so that people like my sisters who are 21 and 16, I'm about to turn 30, don't have to deal with the same experiences that I've had to deal with. My sister's trying to get into the entertainment industry now, and I'm trying to help her not have to deal with the same struggles I had to deal with. To so turn around and be like, because I dealt with it, you have to deal with it too, is the dumbest thing. Because one thing I've learned as a student, but also as a teacher, is that we all learn differently. We all learn differently. Just because you 
dealt with abuse and you allowed that to build you doesn't mean it's going to build the next person doesn't mean it's not it's, it's going to be accepted and taken the same way as the next person doesn't mean that that person is going to see the same lesson that you saw so i really want our elders to stop being like that and if that is the case of oprah winfrey i mean we do have to give, I'm not saying because it's Oprah, don't, 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 it's not a contradiction. I'm just saying this in general. We do have to give our elders a little bit of grace who don't know better. However, when we're trying to teach them better and they're still trying to do better, then ain't no grace. I'm sorry. Ain't no grace. And you don't get to continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over. Because my thing is, there are a lot of things that happen behind closed doors that we don't get to know about, that we don't get to hear, that we don't get to see. And there's conversations like Monique is having right now with Shannon Sharp that I'm sure has happened with Oprah. And my thing is, after those things have happened, ain't no more grace. I don't care if you are Oprah. And I love Oprah, I do. But it sucks when you get older and you start seeing that the parents and the people that we looked up to are just as broken, just as confused, and still trying to figure out life at their grown ages like we are at our young ages. You start to realize that humans are humans, whether they're parents, whether you're idols, whether they're President Barack Obama. Stuff happens. So, yes, when people like Monique speak up, listen to them. Yes, when people like Taraji P. Henson speak up, listen to them. But don't just listen to them. Truly support them because they're going through things, hopefully, so that you don't have to go through them as well. And if you don't speak up, hey, you're going to continue the cycle and you're going to be the next victim. It is what it is. That's the truth. All right, y'all, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have a conversation on knowing how to say no. You heard me right. Knowing how to say no. So stick around. I want you guys to remember you can call in at 847-931-1410. Again, that's 847-931-1410 to get in on the conversation that we're currently having. I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. So we build specially adapted homes at Homes for Our Troops. And thanks to our donors and supporters, this life-changing gift of freedom is provided mortgage-free to these veterans. But we need you to join us, too, in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Listen this Sunday afternoon to Handle on the Law. Let me tell you what I would do, okay? This is not a legal issue. This is a handle issue. He says, mm -hmm. have a blessed day. You reply with, may you rot in hell and just stay there. And he goes, have a blessed day. And you go, you rot in hell. And you see who gives up first. Okay. Play chicken with the guy. That's what I would do. It's Handle on the Law this Sunday afternoon from 4 to 7 right here on WRMN. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Jamie D Show. Woo! Live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 12 p.m. PST, where, what? The Super Bowl is happening in Las Vegas, Nevada this weekend, and also live on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM every Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. CST out of the Elgin in the Chicago land area. Yes. Welcome back. If you're just now tuning in, we just got done going over some daily news. Now we're going to have a conversation on knowing how to say no, because there's so much power in knowing how to say no. Y'all, I'm going to just tell y'all like this. I am a very blunt and honest person. If you ask anyone who knows me, they will tell you that I have absolutely no problem saying how I feel and telling someone about themselves. They would also tell you that I'm very adaptable. I truly know how to code switch, adapt, play the field, and work a room. I'm not mean, rude, or disrespectful, but I won't let anybody play in my face, especially at my grown age. I'm about to be 30. You think I done struggled and sat here and dealt with all this stuff in 30 years to let you play in my face? Absolutely not. Again, like I told you, I don't care who you are. Absolutely not. No. And funny enough, I wasn't always like this. It took me so long to be very honest, to become a person who stuck up for himself and wasn't afraid to tell it like it is. The person I am today truly came from trauma and life experiences, pinning me against the wall and me having to find a way out. Also, therapy. Therapy 
honorable mention, really played an immense part in my growth. Shout out to my therapist. I highly recommend everybody to seek therapy. I think it's a beautiful tool. And for those who are afraid of therapy or think that therapy don't work, just do a Google, Google search. Do a Google search. I understand that you may think that your friend is your therapist because you could tell them any and everything and get solid advice. But I promise you, there is nothing like a person who doesn't truly know you, isn't biased, and is giving you solid advice based on facts, research, and proven results. Growing up, I always found myself praying to God and asking him to give me the strength and courage to do many things. I understood from a very young age that if I wanted to change things in my life, I had to stand up and make it happen. I couldn't wait for someone to save me. Even though, I'm going to be honest with y'all, I always wanted someone to step up and make things easier for me. <sighs> I swear, my younger self had this thought that someone would just swoop in and save me. And not only save me, but change my entire life around and make things easy and right for me. Dumb. <laughs> I blame that on Disney Channel and anime for making me believe that dumb fairy tale. Now, granted, there are some people who actually have that testimony, and I've had that happen for them. It just, unfortunately, wasn't mine and still isn't mine. Now, I keep trying to tell y'all, God has had me on his toughest warrior list since birth. It's gotten to a point where I've actually become numb to a lot of stuff. In all honesty, my life has been amazing. It's been weird. It's been hard. It's been rewarding. It's been worth it. It's felt like it hasn't been worth it at some times. It's been a beautiful surprise. And it's been an unexpected journey with things that I'm still going to experience as life goes on. I promise y'all, if I wrote a book <laughs> about my life, y'all be like, uh, WTF? This book can't be real. Because, <laughs> child, I have been through some things. A lot of my hardships and the teachings of my parents have pushed me to become the things slash the person I've always wanted out of life. My parents always told me that I needed to treat people how I wanted to be treated. And I truly took that to heart because I understood from a very young age that you get what you want out of life, what you put into it. I'm going to say that again so y'all can hear it all the way in the back. If y'all in Alaska listening in and y'all all in the back, I'm going to say it again. You get what you want out of life, what you put into it. That means you have to shift your energy, energy to get exactly what it is you want to get from life. You can't act one way and expect the universe to respond in the exact opposite way. You can't say, I'm going to be mean and selfish to people, but the world's going to give me everything and everyone's going to be nice to me and everyone's going to accept me and everyone's going to love me. You can't do that. You can't think that if I act this way, the world's going to act the exact opposite way. That's not how life works. So because I always wanted to receive love, care, and things from people, I became a person who always made sure to care and love for people while being a giver. I just knew that if I presented myself in that manner, I would receive that back from the universe. And to be honest, I've gotten it back many times. I really have. And that, that, that's me being truthful. However, if I'm being realistic, being such a giver and a positive person doesn't always work out in your favor. Sometimes people take for granted everything you do for them and even take advantage of you. And if you're like me, who's very sensitive at times, that can really hurt. And when you're someone who is not a giver or a nice person because you want attention or just because you're trying to be cool with somebody, it does hurt when you feel like you're not seen, you're not heard, and, and, and people aren't appreciate, pre appreciating you. Because I could be honest, I'm someone who does need appreciation. I do things out of the kindness of my heart, but I also want to know that you appreciated it. I don't think that's asking for attention. I think that's wanting to be seen and cared about. Now, if you disagree, please let me know and educate me by calling in at 847-931-931. 1410. Again, that's 847 931 1410 or comment on my social media platforms. I don't think it's different. And I want to know how you feel about it. You could do something out of the kindness of your heart, but still want to know that people appreciate you and the things you do for them. And that's different from doing nice things because you're seeking attention. So let me know. All right. Because when I personally feel like people care about things I've done for them or that I'm being taken advantage of, I'm tough enough to be like, oh, heck no, I'm done but it still does hurt. And that's why I had to start learning when to say no. And I'm going to tell y'all, that was super hard for me to learn. Now, again, call in and let me know what you think. We're going to take a quick break. And if you guys are calling, we're going to put you guys in the queue. And if you can't call in, like I always say, continue to comment on the social media platforms. I will acknowledge you. Shout out to Coco, who just came in. Shout out to Robin. She says, I feel like Jamie is talking about me today. I'm not. <laughs> but yes, Comment how you feel. Do you think I'm contradicting myself by saying that 
I do things and want to be appreciated for it, but that's not the same thing as seeking attention. We'll be right back. This is the Jamie D Show live on KSHP out of Las Vegas and live on WRMN out of the Elgin in the Chicagoland area. Stay there. You can't beat Stanley's Grill and Craft Bar for great pub food, beer, and specials. Their Royal Slot Room is your destination for gaming, only a few steps away from the bar. Stanley's has a private banquet room with capacity for 75, with its own washrooms, jukebox, pinball, and games. Sign Al Fresco at Stanley's Pavilion Outdoor Dining Area. There's a fireplace and huge TV. Stanley's can also deliver right to your home or other local venue. For catering, visit partywithstan.com. Family owned for over 40 years with three locations around the Elgin area, Beef Villa is open and ready to serve you. Stop in or drive through and get your lunch or dinner hot and fast. Enjoy burgers, dogs, chicken, and of course, beef is waiting for you at either Elgin locations or South Elgin location of Beef Villa. Stop in for the Friday fish special, Villa Burger, pulled pork, or the incredible salads available from Beef Villa. Need help feeding a large group? Catering is always easy with Beef Villa. Go to BeefVilla.com for catering options. That's BeefVilla.com. Golden Corral Buffet and Grill, 154 Gary Avenue in Bloomingdale is open. Golden Corral's legendary Endless Buffet has a variety of delicious favorites and new menu offerings for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Guests can choose from over 150 items, including grilled-to-order sirloin, pork, seafood, as well as old favorites like fried chicken, meatloaf, and mac and cheese. Golden Corral is the only one for everyone. Visit goldencorral.com. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the JVD Show. Woo! Live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 12 p.m. PST out of Las Vegas, Nevada. And live on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM every Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. CST out of the Elgin in the Chicago land area. We're also live on YouTube. Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at The Jamie D Show. That's spelled T-H-E-J-A-I-M-E-D-E-E-S-H-O-W. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and also share the link out to your family, friends, and loved ones. We got Coco in the house. We got Robin in the house. We got Kara in the house. I really appreciate it. And during the break, they put in their comments because I couldn't call. And Coco said, most people are not taught like we are. So when you go out into the world, you have to guard your heart. I agree, Coco. You are not wrong. Robin says, I don't ever want anything in return except to feel appreciated. I'm glad that you feel the same way I feel. Seriously. Also, shout out to Robin's daughter. It's her birthday today. Yes, happy birthday. Yes, love, love, love that. Now, if you're just now tuning in, I already went over some daily news. And now we're having a conversation about knowing how to say no. And like I told you all, I'm a sensitive person. I'm going to be very honest. I am. I'm working on it. And because I'm sensitive, that's why I had to learn how to start saying no. It's just been hard. And as someone who would give their last and their shirt off of their back even to a random, it's hard to say no because even when your no is to protect yourself, your boundaries, and just because you legit just don't want to do it, you feel like a complete a-hole. Now, I don't know about y'all, when I tell somebody no, I feel crappy. No just feels so aggressive and stern, even when the situation even is that isn't even that serious. When you have to tell someone no, it just feels mean in a way. But it's also extremely important, extremely important to get over that. Stand your ground and say no when it's time to say no. And I'm not just talking to y'all, I'm talking to my darn self. No when to say no. It's okay. You will save yourself so much headache and hassle when you just say no. When you stick to your no and you leave whatever it is you're dealing with at that moment with your answer being no, you'll feel so much better. I'm telling you, after you master the art of saying no, that feeling of regret, feeling mean or aggressive goes away. That is why I'm pushing to continue to learn and master the art of saying no. And it's also why I'm pushing it on you all because it's an important skill to have. The skill of being able to say no. You need to have that skill. Because let me tell y'all, people do not deserve you. 
They do not deserve what you bring to the table. They do not, do not deserve your kindness. They surely don't deserve how you will go out of your way for them and still ask for nothing in return. These people do not deserve you. Say no. Tell me about calling in at 847-931-1410. Again, 847-931-1410. If you have a problem with saying no, or if you don't have a problem with saying no, I want to hear it. Or if you can't call in, continue commenting. There are just so many beautiful benefits to saying no, everyone. We have to remember. We have to remember. <laughs> it's okay to say no. Also, I see that we just had a call, but it dropped. If you want to call back in, 847-931-1410. I would love to get you on the radio. Sorry that the call dropped. But yes, please call back in. Now, you may be asking, what are these benefits? According to livehappy.com, quote, one, saying no means you value your time. Saying no is the best tool you have for distancing yourself from negative people or situations. Remind yourself how valuable your time is and you're less likely to hesitate when it comes to saying no to something you really don't want to do. Saying no requires a strong sense of self, but in the end, it will reinforce your emotional well-being. Two, saying no can be a brave act. No can be difficult to say without hedging or including an explanation. You might say, quote, I'll have to think about it, or I'm not sure maybe. But those phrases not only confuse people to think, is that a yes or a no, but also dilute your own certainty about what you want. Consider each time you say no without a hedge or explanation to be brave and also have an act of self-respect. Just say no. Just say no. Don't, don't, don't feel afraid to say no. Just say it. Three, saying no means you know what you want. Rather than immediately responding to a question or request, take time to ask yourself, what do I really want? Sometimes for various reasons, we have to do things we don't want to do. But if you find yourself constantly saying yes, even when you don't want to, you should consider your own needs. You may build up resentment, which can damage relationships. Say no. Four, saying no means standing your ground. Some people won't take no for an answer. They'll urge you, and come up with all kinds of creative solutions to make you say yes. I'm not going to lie. I'm sometimes somebody who does that. I'm working on it, okay? But I hold myself accountable so you don't have to. Sometimes I just want the person to say yes. But that's a real test testament. These people are a challenge, a.k.a. me sometimes, when you're trying to make your life a more positive, productive place. Now, I'm never not trying to be nobody's positive place. But sometimes I be wanting to do some hood rat stuff with my hood rat friends. I'm just saying. When encountering won't take no types, sometimes me. Stand your ground and repeat your initial response. Even when people like me going to get sad when you say no, sir, no. If you find yourself wavering, recall the reasons you choose to say no in the first place and consider how good you'll feel if you remain true to yourself. You'll find this fortitude carries over into other areas of your life. Five, saying no is sometimes saying yes. Every time you say no to one thing, you're saying yes to something else. No means freeing up your time, and in some cases, your emotional bandwidth to engage in other, perhaps more positive activities. If you feel badly for turning someone down, reframe your response, offering to do something another time that you want to do. It can be tough to say no. Many of us were raised to always be nice and say yes. Learning how to decline an invitation or request without feeling guilty is an essential aspect of living a happy life. The more you master the art of saying no when necessary, the easier it becomes to fill your life with activities and people who bring you true happiness. If you find yourself defaulting to yes more than you like or you struggle with sticking to no once you said it, come back to these five points and remind yourself of the positive power of no. End quote. Being able to say no is a true belief. You mean it? It feels like no other feeling in the world when you can just live in your no. Now, for those who say it's easier said than done, I got you. Here's a YouTube video by Science of People on how to say no. Do you have a hard time saying no? I have a really hard time setting up boundaries. So on Twitter, for one of our weekly Twitter polls, I decided to ask our followers if they agreed with the following statement. I have a hard time saying no. True or false? So 48% of you said true, 52% said false. Again, almost evenly split. So what happens if you want to say no when you aren't quite sure how? I thought I would give you a couple of tips on how to easily do this. Mm -hmm. 
One, plan out your no's ahead of time. So sometimes when I feel really guilty about saying no, I can't really do it in the moment. So what I'll often say to someone if they ask me for a spontaneous meeting or to go out or for a favor is I'll say, hey, will you mind emailing me about it or texting me about it and I can look at my schedule? That way it gives me a little bit of time to think things through, to ask follow-up questions, and to check my calendar. It's also sometimes easier to say no in writing. Second, this is the hard one. Don't offer an explanation. So as humans, when we say no, we like to have an excuse. I can't because, or I shouldn't because, and sometimes those explanations are real, and sometimes they're not. I think it's really important to not offer an explanation at all because people will argue with you. If you say, oh, you know, I really, I can't come to the party because I got to get home early for my babysitter. They'll say, oh, don't worry, you can come early and I'll let you leave before eight. And then you're in trouble. So I say, say thank you and just say no. The third thing I would recommend is to try to offer an alternative. So while I don't like offering an explanation, I think it's great if you offer something else that they might like. So for example, if someone asks you a party and you don't really feel like going, you can say, ah, oh, so sorry, I don't think I'll be able to make it. But you wanna do brunch next weekend? That way they don't get their feelings hurt, they see that you're grateful, and they don't try to fight with you on why you can't go tonight. The last thing is make sure that you are setting up boundaries that protect you. It's really, really easy to get in the pattern of saying yes to people who really aren't appreciating you. So make sure that you're paying attention to the people in your life, what they're asking, and you're setting boundaries where you need them. Snaps, snaps, yes. Know how to say no. Set your boundaries. Remember it's okay. Live in your no. And if that wasn't good enough and you need to hear it in a more personal way, here's a video from BuzzFeed Multiplier on YouTube on how to say no. Chantel Butch wrote us saying that she has a really, really hard time saying no to people. How do you say no? I think this especially happens with people that are either really awkward or have been bullied a lot. They just really want to be nice to people and have people like them. Just saying no, you want to please people. We all want to please people. But you gotta say no sometimes. If you're not taking care of yourself, how the hell are you gonna take care of other people? Practice it in the mirror. Go into your bathroom and just say no in the mirror. You're turning down an opportunity. But saying no can also lead to opportunities because saying no makes people want you more. Maybe you should consider how awkward it is saying no versus how difficult it is to do what they ask you to do and a kind of way and measure. People are used to hearing no. I think that's something we forget is that we think that everybody else in the world has said yes and that I'm going to be the first person to say no to them. Everybody's heard the word no before. Everybody's had to deal with rejection of some sort. If it doesn't make you feel good and if you don't think it's the right thing to do, you shouldn't do it. Yes, snaps. One thing that I really appreciated in that video is that they said more people are used to hearing no than you think they are. You know how many no's I've gotten in my life? You know how many no's I've gotten in my life? <laughs> I had to switch up the voice for y'all. Being in the entertainment industry, you get no's even in your sleep. I didn't even apply to that and you told me no. I didn't even look in your direction you told me no. Man, that's one thing that I had to get used to hearing. I'm numb to no's now. Jeez. He, he, listen, he ain't lie. He did not lie. When you think that people can't take no, that is your insecurities telling you that you need to get over yourself. <laughs> Yes, I'm telling you that your insecurities are telling you that you need to get over yourself because more people are used to being told no than you think. Coco Chris says, the older I get, I'm stepping into my no phase of life. When you realize what we are truly here for, there's no time for nonsense. Yes, Robin B says, I'm just now learning to set boundaries. And I need you guys to do that. Remember, it's okay to say no. I want you all to protect your boundaries. Like Kara says, boundaries and lines are very important. <laughs> Robin B says, my boss just called and asked me to do something. I told her no. Feels good. <laughs> hey, Robin, if you could tell your boss no, do it. 
Now, now I'm going to tell you this too. No, we're not to say no. Please don't get yourselves in trouble. Don't take what you just heard on the Jamie D show and get y'all fired. And don't come back here telling me that I owe y'all a paycheck, okay? <laughs> but yes, you better set your boundaries and tell the lady no or that man, whoever your boss is, no. <laughs> All right, I want to take a moment to shout out M and Megan out of Dallas, Texas. They just turned 21 today. Happy birthday, M and Megan. Woo! Yes, we love you all the way here in Chicago and Las Vegas, Nevada. We want you all to know that the Jamie D Show loves you and is happy to know that you just turned 21 today. You're finally somewhat more of an adult. Enjoy your birthdays. M and Megan. And we heard y'all are twins. Isn't that cool? I actually always want to be a twin, but hey, it didn't happen for me. And now I can just be me. <laughs> All right, y'all. This has been the Jamie D Show live on KSHP AM 1400 and 107.1 FM every Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 12 p.m. PST out of Las Vegas, Nevada and live on WRMN AM 1410 and 96.7 FM every Monday through Friday from 1 p.m. until 2 p.m. CST out of the Elgin and the Chicagoland area. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this link out so more people can hear about the Jamie D Show. And as always, if you want to promote your business, product, services, music, podcast, and more, hit us up at info at jamied.com. That's I-N-F-O at J-A-I-M-E-D-E-E.com. And I mean, if you want to donate to the show, we accept donations too. Hit us up. All right, y'all. We love you all. Have a good rest of your day. See you tomorrow. Bye.